Hello and welcome to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher, where each week we hear from a believer in Jesus living in Israel or the West Bank today, both Jews and Arabs. This week my guest is Dahlia Alon. We heard her husband on last week's programme. Dan and Dahlia became believers in their 40s whilst on a trip to America. As you'll hear later in this interview, Dahlia had suffered from rejection for her entire life. But all that changed when she met Yeshua. She's concerned now for the small but growing body of believers living in Israel, and she and her husband now live in the peace and quiet of the Negev Desert in southern Israel and spend much of their time in prayer and intercession. I met Dan and Dahlia in Beersheba recently, and in this interview, Dahlia shares from the heart about why she believes the Lord brought them to the Negev. First of all, being in the desert, it's to be far away from all the, I call it, actions in the, in the, in the land. To be more quiet, more relaxed, more far away from people, you know, and more to concentrate in Him. And of course, sometimes we, we, we take time to go out to the desert and to seek him and to ask him to talk to us. And it's much more easier in this area than in other areas which are so much uh, noise, m- active, or all kind of things. Uh, since we came here to the Negev, we see more clear our calling for, for, for the body. It's more clear. It was in our heart even when we were living in the north, but since we came here, we saw that all the, the scriptures, all the word of God that speak about the desert, all the, all the, the history of Israel started in the Negev, you know, in like Abraham and uh, in Beersheba and, and Moses in the desert and, and, and the, which the, the fathers of the, the nations. And we, 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 we know and that, that the Lord is doing with us the same, to, more hear, to, to hear him, to follow him, to do his work. And uh, I think that we, we already started to do it. And uh, what we start is that what was in our heart since we came here, uh, to build a group of uh, believers that they have on, our, on their heart the body of Christ. Because, you know, as we all know, the, the body is more attack than the other people around, around us. And um, we know that all the, the non-believers, they are already in the pocket of the enemy. Uh, but he is fighting to fail us. So we need more prayers and more um, protection uh, for, for us as, a, as a, his body. You're suggesting that there's a lot of Christians praying for Israel, the nation, but forgetting the believers here. Is that really what's your, on your heart? Yes, it's really what in my heart. You know, because we are Israelis, what I think that it's, we don't pray for ourselves. We pray for the body, I mean, for Israel. Even we evangelize to them, we speak about the Lord with them, and we give books and everything. But when we see the body attacked, we know that we need, as I share with my sister just lately, that we need to, to as Nehemiah did it, to build the walls again of the protection around us, not let the enemy come in and overcome, overcome us. So I, I really want to, to encourage the, another more believers in the world, you know, to pray for the body. Everywhere, it's not only in Israel because we are body, and his body is spread all over the world, and um, we all attack. It's the same in Israel, in England, America, Nigeria, whatever. So that's something that I really, we already started here now, just lately. We did one meeting with a group in Dimona. Dimona is the center of the Negev, that people, believers from Beersheba, Arad, 
Mitz Peramon can come together. We do it once in a month and a half. And um, I hope it will be uh, more groups everywhere, in, not only in Israel, but all over the world, to pray for us as a body. Dalia, can I just ask you to talk about the body because people may not know how many believers there are here. I mean, there aren't that many of you. In the whole of Israel, there are about 12,000 believers. Uh, yes. But here, I guess in the Negev, there are, what, just a few, f- hundred. few hundred? Yes, yes. But I think it's still important because we are the key for those that will come. We, we, we know that they will come. One the time that now it's relaxed and okay, everything is okay, you know. People uh, have their own jobs and, uh, you know, daily life. It's, uh, everything is uh, regular, you know. But by the time, the earth will, be to sh- will, will shake and, and will be, we will see more uh, disasters coming. And it will come because it's written all these earthquakes and all this kind of uh, wars and everything that will come, more and more will come to know the Lord Yeshua because they, they know, they will know, the Lord will open their eyes to see that He is the shelter, the real shelter. So we need to be prepared to receive those that they will come soon from around us, all the, the, the people around us to, and in the other countries to know him and to be in this shelter and to be protected and, and not to be afraid of what is going to happen. So you really believe that you are preparing the way for the future. There's a few hundred of you now, but you are anticipating really a great move of God here as things get yes. more difficult. Yes, yes. Especially when we read in uh, Ezekiel um, chapter 21, he speak about the fire that will start from the south. And that's and we proclaim it in the first meeting that we we did only one wing meeting with us as a group. And um, we, we proclaimed this uh, verse about it. And of course in the south, it's m- I think it's in the desert, it's much more easier to concentrate in him. And uh, that's what we pray that it will start from here and go to the nation. As we saw that, you know, the, the, the people of Israel were, were born in the desert. Everything was da- started in the desert. So we hope that, and we, and we pray and we believe. It will, it's not only hope. We believe that it will start from here. It go to the center of Israel, to the north, maybe to the other nations. The group of intercessor, intercessors for the body. Of course, he said that Jerusalem is the center. We, know, we just came yesterday from Jerusalem, and we felt so much the, the intensive life, intensive um, pressure, pressure on us. So and when we came here, we were so relaxed. I just came home to the desert after we drove all the kilometers, uh, all the desert away, I mean, back home. And I just felt relaxed and prepared to do the do- job the Lord gave me, even to pray for those in Jerusalem, that they suffer much more than us. Dalia, can we just really make this story personal? Because you've had such a, a deep walk with the Lord since you became a believer. Mm-hmm. And you were sharing um, just how unhappy your life has been, really right from the very, very beginning, but how all that has changed. Yes, it's really changed. I, uh, I came from, from, from the bottom of the pit, I can say, because uh, my mother, she wanted to abort me. And... Um, it was by miracle that she didn't do it because it was after the doctor checked all the details and he said to her, listen, it's too late. The, the baby in your womb is above three months and you cannot do it. Anyway, I was born by his grace. And, and, um, but when I was born, all the troubles started because by being as a rejected person in the womb of the mother, of course, I, I came out with rejection. And it was my life uh, around 40 years since we became a believer. So anyway, when we became a believer and, and um, I started to, to walk with the Lord, uh, I, I felt that I have to get rid of all those years or all these affections that affected me as a being a rejected person. So it took me around 10 years to be healed from it, and 
And you know, it's just, but I don't forget each minute of my life where, from where I came from. And it's much helping me to, to go, to continue and to grow more, to know what's oh, such a grace that the Lord gave me to, to let me, first of all, to let me be born, but then to heal me from injection. And I know that many, many, many people suffer from injection. And instead of to say, yes, we are rejected, we need healing, we bring to the light all the outcome of rejection, which is a pride or a kind of self pityness or self, um, um, I call it, uh, not, wor not being worthy, and uh, some react with uh, pretendence, play games, and, and, and all this kind of you know, masks that we wear to, to, to cover the, 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 um, the rejection. But by the time we bring everything to the light and we say, Father, yes, I was rejected. I am rejected. Please heal me. And he will do it. And it will be, I think that all the body of Christ will be changed because I, I know and I met a lot of believers that still suffer from rejection. They don't admit it. Of course, it's not easy to do it. And as I remember in myself, but by the time we do it, we reveal it, the healing is coming and we can see a big, big uh, revival around ourselves. Dahlia Alon, an Israeli believer sharing her story. And you're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher. As this interview with Dahlia has revealed, the body of believers in Israel is small, but it's growing. And the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a Christian charity based in the UK that supports the needs of Jewish believers and Arab Christians living in Israel and the West Bank. If you would like to know more about our work and receive our free bi-monthly newsletter, please either visit our website, www.olivetreefund.org, or write to me, Julia Fisher at the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, P.O. Box 850, Horsham, RH12 9GA in the UK. Join me at the same time next week for another story from the Olive Tree. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.